In Matthew 19, 26, Jesus looked at them intently and said, Humanly speaking, it is impossible. But with God, everything is possible. Amen. Everything is possible. Repeat that with me. But with God, with God. everything is possible. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. Hey, this morning we're going to be introducing a new song for you. But before we do it, I would like, love for you to sing along with me so you, you can kind of get to know the song a little bit, okay? It goes something like this. There's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a mountain that He can move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can do. You got it? You got it? Woo! Okay. In just one word. You calm the storm that surrounds me. Just one word, the darkness has to retreat. And just one touch, I feel the presence of heaven. And just one touch, my eyes are open to see. My heart can't help but believe. Come on. There's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a mountain that He can move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can't do. Oh, 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 oh. just one word. You heal what's broken inside me. Oh, just one word. And you revive every dream. Oh, just one touch. I feel the power of heaven. Oh, just one touch. My eyes are open to see. My eyes couldn't help but believe. There's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a mountain that He can't move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that a God can do. You believe that? Come on. There's nothing that a God can do. There's not a prison wall he can break through. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that a God can do. For greater things, there's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like the power. The power like a God can do. There's not a mountain that He can move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way there's nothing that a God can do there's nothing that a God can do there's not a prison wall he can break through oh praise the name that makes a way there's nothing that a God can do come on whoa 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 There's 
there's nothing, there's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a prison wall he can't break through. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can't do. Some people think you're distant, just some word on a page. You're nothing more than fables handed down along the way. But I've seen you part the waters when no one else could pull me from the deep. It's who you are to me. Some people think you just live in cathedrals made of stone. But I know you live inside my heart. Know that it's your home And I've seen you in the sunset In the eyes of a stranger on the street That's who you are to me You're amazing, faithful Love's open door when I'm empty You fill me with longer for more Of your mercy, your goodness Lord, you're the air that I breathe that's who you are to me. Who you are to me. Sometimes I have my doubts. I'm sure that everybody does. And I wonder when I stumble, I'm still worthy of your love. But I know that I get stronger when I'm talking to you down on my knees. You're everything I need. You're amazing, faithful. Love's open door when I'm empty. You fill me, hunger for more of your mercy, your goodness. Lord, you're the air that I breathe. That's who you are to me. forever holy you're the lamb who is worthy forgiveness my healer the messiah my redeemer you're amazing faithful love's open door when I'm empty you fill me hunger for more of your mercy your goodness Lord you're the air that I breathe that's who you are you are greater higher over it all in your presence Jesus I stand in awe of your mercy your goodness Lord, you're the air that I breathe. That's who you are to me. That's who you are to me. God a praise, amen. Let's give God a praise. That's who he is to us, amen. Church in Mark 9, 23, Jesus said, anything is possible if a person believes. Amen. Anything is possible. Believe that God is bigger than your circumstances. He is the Alpha and the Omega, amen. The beginning and the end. He is faithful then. He is faithful now. Believe and never forget to thank God for all He has done and doing in our lives. Amen. Woo. You know, church, this time last year, pandemic started. Actually, a little bit more further up, a little bit like March somewhere. But remembering that, 
God is working through all that. And now there's vaccination. Things are starting to be better, amen? So let's not be the one that left, the 10 that left and didn't say, or the 9 that left and didn't say thank you to Jesus. Let's be, let's be all of them, that, the one that came back and said, Lord, thank you. That you are doing things that we don't see at times. That you're always working. Lord, you are the way maker, the miracle worker, promise keeper, and the light in our darkness. you I worship you you are here rearranging destinies I worship you I worship you you are here turning lives around I worship you I worship you, you are here, working miracle, I worship you, I worship you, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every life. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Come on, say Waymaker. You are Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Come on. Woo! Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Let's sing it one more time. Waymaker, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 Even when I don't see it, you're working. 
Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. Come on. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Just the voices, come on. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 Let's sing this last time. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Amen. Amen. Give God a praise. Him. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, Lord, you make the way. Yes, Lord. Father God, you have... You've carried us on this journey. You have, you have moved in advance of us. You, you didn't leave us. You didn't let us down. And thank you, God, we can move forward, Lord, in courage. We can move forward, Lord, in passion. We can move forward, Lord, in faith and trust and glorifying you every step of the way, Lord telling the world that you are the way maker for our lives. In Jesus' name we praise you. And all God's children said, amen, amen. Give the Lord praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we want to give a big shout out of praise to uh, all the people that set up and the worship team. And I uh, especially want to acknowledge, yeah, 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 yeah. Praise God. Praise God. You know, I, I especially want to acknowledge Julio Barton. Yeah, those of you who know Julio, Julio's off to the side here in our sound tent. Um, he's the guy that gets up and gets it moving before everybody else does. So uh, while you guys are still comfy and snuggly at home and in your beds, uh, he's getting it moving for us all. So Julio, thank you for being that spearhead for us. Amen. And, uh, and let me also just give a request that uh, he could use help. He could use some help. So uh, if God has put it on your heart that uh, you like this place and you want to not just be a consumer Christian, but you want to be one that helps God move in different ways and you got the ability to, uh, you know, lift 20 pounds and you got maybe even the ability that you like music and you want to learn how to balance it out. We would love to have you be a part of that. Amen. Hey, you know, we just got done singing that song, Waymaker. And uh, I don't know if you knew it or not, but, uh, you know, that, that song's kind of, it's relatively old. It's not too young, but it's relatively old. It was written in 2015 by an artist by the name of Sinach. 
And uh, Sinach is a Nigerian gospel singer. And uh, she released it in 2015, and she was the first singer-songwriter to, to have a song that reached the top billboard Christian charts with a number one for 12 weeks in a row. Nobody else before 2015 had a number one Christian chop, uh, Christian song hit the top of the charts for that long length of time. And it, was, it became a well-known tune, and it was, it's been covered by many, many artists, uh, Michael W. Smith, Mendisa, Leland, uh, Passion does it, Bethel does it. You can hear different versions of it uh, performed. And then, you know, like, like any song kind of has a natural life to it. After 2015, after it hit the number one spot, it, it subsided and it went down and it kind of went there in the background. But then a very interesting God phenomena took place with that song. And that is COVID. Come COVID time in March of last year, the song started to show up again. And it started to climb up to the top 100 songs around April. And then before you know it, in June of 2020 last year, all the way to December, it was the number one song again. And it was not only the number one song in, in consumers buying it, but it became the number one song that was performed or sung by the churches in the United States. And, and, and that's an easy thing that gets tracked because artists like, and churches like ourselves, we have to turn in to, um, for licensing rights what songs we performed and how often. And, and so it, be, it became the number one song last year, and it's probably of no surprise that it was. Because when you look at the, the meaning, when you look at the message, when you look at, honestly, the theology that's behind that song, that God is making a way that God is performing miracles, that God is giving a light unto the world, that, that a light unto darkness. When you look over that and you recognize what we went through as, as a body of people, as a family of God, we needed a way through. We needed a miracle. We needed someone to keep his promises, and we needed to know that there was going to be light after this darkness. Amen? Amen. So for the next few weeks, we're going to do this sermon series. It's all about those particular attributes or characteristics about God. We're going to take a look at a sermon series that looks at, at, at the fact that he does make a way, that looks at he is a miracle worker, he does keep his promises, and he is a light to the darkness. And so for the next few weeks, we're going to look at that character of God and understand what does that character mean? What does that mean that what does he do? What does that mean to how we relate to them? What does it mean if he's these attributes? How do we engage with him? What does he expect us to do? How does that relate to his purpose? How does that relate to us being Christians in this world walking through him? And so we're going to be able to get a more accurate picture of who God is as a result of looking at these lyrics, looking at these attributes. And it brings to mind what A.W. Tozer said. He said, What comes into your mind when you think about God is the most important thing about you. Stop and think about that for a second. When I say the word God, what comes into your mind, that is a defining thing about your character and about your life. And so what's ever in your head, I would also add, uh, whatever is in your head when it comes to the word God, that is probably the most important factor of how you respond to what's going on in our world right now as COVID is sort of being lifted, as restrictions are coming up. As we're coming out of this crisis, as Dennis said in our worship, as we're coming out of this crisis, we don't want to be one of the, you know, one of the, the, the 10 lepers that was healed and didn't go back to thank God. We don't want to be the ungrateful ones, that he was the one that made a way and did miracles and kept his promises. You know, the truth be told, when we think about God, if the truth be told, I think many of us often have too small of a definition about who he is. Too small of a definition of what God can do. And, and, and also, sometimes we may also think that in, instead of his being always there and always moving and keeping his promises, sometimes we just think that he's optional. 
That, that God is just something that we come to every now and then, or we encounter every now and then. And it's critical for us to examine and know what this definition and who this character of God is. And so what I want to do today is I want to look at this good news that God has for us and that he does want to reveal to us who he is. He wants to tell us who he is. And so we're going to turn to Exodus chapter 3, where, where God tells us who he is for the very first time. So in Exodus chapter 3, go ahead and turn to there. And if, uh, if you need a Bible, please let us know. You can grab one here at our prayer tent, or if you're watching with us online, connect with us, tell us, and we'd be glad to send one to you. And we're going to look at Exodus chapter 3, and, and, and as always, you know, there, there's four simple steps you can take to when you open up your Bible. You can read any part of Scripture, and this is a great step and a great tool for doing a Bible study. You can open up any Scripture, and it, it will, you can ask the question of, what does it say about God? And then you can ask a second question of, what does it say about me? And then you can ask a third question of, well, what is God asking me to do? And then the fourth step you can take in your Bible study is you can pray for God to give you the strength to do that. So we're going to do that today. And so go ahead and turn to Exodus chapter 3. We're just going to kind of break it down a little bit section by section. And this first bit that we see is, uh, the, scene is uh, the scene of Moses in the burning bush. Many of you are familiar with the story of the Moses and the burning bush, but in case you aren't, you know, Moses is basically uh, is a leader, or has yet to become a leader of the Israelite nation, but he was, he was a Jewish boy that was born uh, at a time when the Egyptians uh, had the Israelites in slavery. But he was adopted by the, the royal court and the royal family. He was raised up privileged. But then he saw what the Pharaoh was doing to God's people in his persecution, and he became angry. And he actually killed an Egyptian. And he realized the shame with that. He realized he was going to be caught. Pharaoh was then going to take his life and punish him. So he skedaddled and he hightailed it out of Egypt. And he goes off into this, this arid area where Mount Sinai is. And he becomes a shepherd. And he becomes an old man. And now here he is, this old man, wandering around, just doing his job out in the mountains. And it says, One day Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go see it. Now let's just take a pause for a second and let's learn this first principle about God. What does it say about God? God is trying to get our attention. God is trying to get our attention. And, you know, if, if you're walking around and you see a burning bush start talking to you, you're going to pay attention. And, and, and so there's the message for us. If God is trying to get your attention, pay attention. Now, let me just ask you personally, has, has God engaged in your life in such a way? Maybe it wasn't a burning bush, but maybe it was a burning word. But God tried to get your attention in some way. And, and did you pay attention? Did you pay attention to what he said? And sometimes God will use the most common places. This is a kind of a common place for Moses. He's just doing his job. God can, have you ever had that time where all of a sudden someone says something to you at work and it kind of makes something click and pop for you or what's going on in your life? Or, or maybe you're cooking dinner and, and something comes to you and you realize, oh, that's what God wants me to do. Or maybe you're talking to somebody or, or, or you're even, you know, just driving to work and all of a sudden, you know, you hear something maybe on a Christian song. Any of you have that experience before? Going to get an amen or a honk? Yeah, yeah. It may not be a burning bush, but pay attention. Pay attention. Because, I mean, if there's one question for us that I think that we need to recognize is, do you think that during COVID that God was trying to get our attention? Hello. Now, I'm not saying that COVID was, you know, a burning bush to make us, you know, wake up to listening to God. But during the situation, God uses all things good for those who love him. Don't you think he was trying to give us a message of what the value is of gathering together and being to one another is, is all about? Do you think he was trying to give us a message about how uh, non-important 
having a church building is and how important it is maybe to have less activities as a family and do family meals together? Do you think he was trying to give us a message maybe about running around and, and taking kids to soccer and all these activities and, and, and you know, slapping Taco Bell in, in the back seat after, after driving may not be what God wants? Uh, do, do you see that maybe he was giving us some, some kind of message about how important it is to think of other people first and their well-being? And then maybe the things that we do need to address that and care for other people. We need to pay attention. We need to pay attention. And, and, and so now let's, let's continue on here, uh, reading in verse 4. When the Lord saw Moses coming to the, uh, take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush, Moses, Moses, here I am, Moses replied. Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals. You're standing on holy ground. I am the God of, of Jacob. Excuse me, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look to God. Notice what happens when, when the presence of God is strong. He takes over the atmosphere. That's holy ground. That is holy ground. Now, let, let's learn something here about the difference between Old Testament presence and New Testament presence. Old Testament presence, you know, God shows up and, 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 he, and, he, and he visits every now and then. Here's a visitation. Here's a visit of the Holy Spirit. And, and recognize Moses. It's like, oh man, the, the, the Spirit of God is so strong. I, I, I'm not worthy. I'm going to hit the ground. I'm going to take my shoes off because I don't want to desecrate this place. I don't want to make it dirty. That's the Old Testament. God visits. That was the response. Well, in the New Testament, God's presence is everywhere. His Holy Spirit is inside of us. He lives inside of us. And so, honestly, we, we sing some songs that are, have the wrong wording to it. Sometimes we sing a song that says, you know, Holy Spirit, show up. It's like, no, he's here already. We need to connect to him. We need to take our sandals off. So when you're coming to worship, you know what? You can worship on the way here. You don't have to wait to be here. Holy Spirit, as soon as you open your eyes, there's the Holy Spirit. Take your sandals off. Take your sandals off and be in that presence. Be in that presence because God can change that atmosphere. And so now let's look to see what happens in the next. In verse 7, Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I've heard their cries, their distress, because of the harsh slave drivers. Yes, I'm aware of their suffering. So I, can come down, so I came down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out to Egypt, into their own fertile and spacious land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey. The land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, Jebusites now live. All the ites are there. Look, the cry of the people of Israel has reached me, and I've seen how harshly the Egyptians abuse them. Now go, for I'm sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people, of Israel, out of Egypt. See, God is about to make a way. God is a way maker. He sees what's going on for us. He sees what's going on for them. He hears their cries. He hears our cries. He hears. He cares. He sees. He's doing something about it. Make no mistake. Our God is a way maker. Make no mistake. He's moving in advance in your life. Make no mistake. He's moving in advance in this world fulfilling his plan. And, and, and Moses' his response, it, it's amazing here, you know, reading on, verse 12 and verse 11. But Moses protested to God, who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? God answered, I'll be with you. And this is your sign that I am the one who has sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God at this very mountain. You know, Moses is saying, look, there, 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 you know, there, there's no way I can do this. 
And, and, and you know, it's, it's kind of amazing. You know, sometimes we think of Moses like this Marvel comic book superhero guy. You know, he's got this, he's got this colored long robe on, and he's got this magical cane. He's got this beard, and, and he's sort of like, you know, like this, you know, kind of magician Merlin kind of super thing for God. But that's not who he is. He's an old dude. And, and he's been living his life in shame. And he's been living his life thinking he's not enough and he can't measure up because he killed somebody. He hasn't forgiven himself for that. He's just this old guy with the, with the sheep thing. And, and, and he's going, there's no way I can go back and be this powerful person for God. And notice what God does. You know, he, he basically says to Moses, it's not about you. It's about me. You know, I don't... You know, so, I mean, have you been there in this past year? Did you, were you there this year? Like, who am I? Who am I to be a nurse taking care of patients who are dying that have, who have COVID? Who am I to be able to care for them? I know that's real for some of you. You know, who am I to be able to care for my family, that's, that my aging parents now that I can't even get to, I can't even see? Who am I? Uh, who am I that's going to become a homeschool teacher now, who am I that's going to try to, you know, uh, uh, you know pay and, and provide for my family financially now that I can't work? Who am I? God said to us this whole last year, it ain't about you. And it's not about you. It, it's not about who you are. It's about who he is. And, and notice he doesn't give him a pep talk. He doesn't give him a pep talk to saying, oh, you can do it, Moses. They didn't say, oh, you know, come to this seminar and, and, and learn, some, learn some principles about, you know, self-actualizing yourself and, and, and making anything possible, right? He didn't abuse a, a scripture that we often abuse, which is I can do all things in Christ who gives me strength. You know, you can't do all things. You can, you know, you can do all things that Christ called you to is the context of that right? You're not a superman. It's God that's going to be able to do that. It is not about you. So now check this out. Look at this next part. Look at this next part. Moses protested. If I go to the people of Israel and tell them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, they'll ask me, uh, what's the God's name? Uh, then what should I tell them? This is the first time in recorded history that someone asked God, can I see some ID? Can I, can I see your ID? I, I need to know where you live. I need to know your name. I need to know your social security number. First time. And, and here's God's reply. God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. God has also said to Moses, say this to the people of Israel, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my eternal name, my name to remember for all generations. I am, I am is who, who's doing it. I am is the name of God. Now that when he said the words, I am, he was saying the word, yad heh vah -he. Yad heh vah -he. Now, if you say it really quickly, Yad vah -he -he, you end up getting the word Yahweh. Now, when you write that word in Hebrew, you write it with consonants only. It's Y-H-W-H. -H. You pronounce it backwards. You read right to left, and it comes out as being Yad heh vah -he. Now, later on, they added vowels as they were writing it, but when they spoke it, they just, they didn't speak yahe, yvahe. It was too holy. You would, you would, you would, it would be sacrilege. You would dirty the name of God. And so they only said, yah. They only said the word yah. And, and that's where we get hallelujah. The hallelujahs to yah, to God. And, and, and then they added, you know, and they kind of then added some consonants to the, uh, the, the Y-H-W-H, went from the word Adonai, which means Lord, and, and you end up getting, you know, it kind of morphed into the word Jehovah, right? And, and so you see that word, Yahe Vahe, you, you see that word 6,823 times in the Old Testament. You see that word written that way. Now, what it literally means, it literally means be. 
B E. Say that. B. 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 It, it, it literally means B. When he says I am, it's saying that B, I existed before there was existence. I, I exist after there's existence. I am is here. I am here now. I am before there was a, a anything. I am after. I'm an omega and an and alpha. I don't have to prove myself to you. I do not have to prove myself to anyone. I am B. I am B. I am, I am being. I am everything. I, 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 am, I, I created everything. I am being after. I am B created. I am B sustained things. B controls things. B gives everything we need. B is uncontainable. B is immeasurable. And, and so last year, last year, who made a way for us out of COVID? B. B. Yeah. You can say that. Who made a way for us out of COVID? B. Who gave, who's gave the wisdom of how the chemistry of our body works with this virus? B. B. Who, 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 who gave us the vaccine, the, the vaccine that is allowing us to, to be freer and, and is coming out of this? B. B. Who, who, who is there when our finances were crushed because we couldn't go to work? B. Who, who, who was with us when we were cooped up and going crazy and youth and children were thinking about suicide and depression? B was there. Who was with your family and your parents as they were you know, in nursing homes or, or couldn't, be, uh, couldn't be loved by you or perhaps even dying because they were sick? B. B was there. And even though, even though we're just weeks away from being at the beaches, weeks away from being able to, you know, walk with your family into the ice cream store and get, get ice cream at Disneyland, even though we're, you know, just weeks away from being able to, you know, be together again, right? It is B, it is B that it is, is moving things to be able to do that. And a key thing about this, you know, a key thing is to know that, you know, that's the first question of who is God? God is B. The key thing is to know because he's B, that means I am not. If he is I am, that means I am not. So I, I got a little object lesson for you, maybe a little inspiration. Summer's coming up. Pretty soon you're going to be at a barbecue. You're going to be at one of these and you're going to be at one of these. You're going to be at a place where you're going to go to grab that cup. You're going to grab that solo cup and you're going to write your name on it. Here's what you can write on it. You can write, I am not because that's who you are. He is and you are not. I am not. You know, it, you know as, as the John the Baptist said, you know, he must become greater. I must become lesser. God is the one who's moving, not us. He's the one that we're following. And so what, is, what does God want us to do with that? First and foremost, he wants us to remember that he is, that he is the way maker, that, that it is him that is, that is God almighty, and we're not. He knows every hair on our head. He wants to reveal himself to us. He wants to talk to you. He wants to be in relationship with you. He, want, he cares in what's going on for you. He sees how you're about to come out of this. And he wants to be with you in the celebration of it. But he also has a purpose for you in it, just like Moses did. And that is guide people out of darkness and bondage guide people out of bondage. It's not you that's going to do it. It's going to be him. It doesn't matter if you're a stutterer or if you killed somebody. It doesn't matter what your sin is. It doesn't matter if, 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 if you have a sin of addiction, you have a sin of anger, you have a sin of pornography, you have a sin of, of cheating, you have a sin of lying. God can forgive God forgives you for that and he wants to he wants to be spoken through you to other people to be rescuing them from darkness into light. 
That's what God wants us to do. He's making a way so we follow the way. So we teach the way. So we show other people the way. He wants us to speak to the pharaohs out there of the world to say to them, let my people go. So I want to conclude our time with communion here today. And I want you to go ahead and, and go ahead and grab your cup that you got when you when you pulled up. And I want you to remember this aspect of God, this aspect of God that He declared for us through Jesus. I want us to just stop and ponder Jesus for a little bit. In, in John chapter eight, in verse fifty-eight. Jesus was being followed by people and they were kind of confused about him and Abraham and they were making some accusations about him. And, uh, and they were wondering about his identity. And in John chapter 8, here are these amazing words that Jesus said to them. They said, Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, before Abraham was even born, I am. At that point, they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus was hidden from them and they left the temple. A.W. Tozer asks and challenges us, who do, we, who do we think God is when we think of his name? Jesus made it very clear, I am. He made it very, very clear even then that he's God Almighty. He was, he is, and will ever be. He used the words, I am. And so as we look at this little wafer, we recognize that B, who created everything, created a man and came in that form and almost literally crawled on a cross and, and broke his body for our sins. B wanted to be with us forever and so he died for our sins. So let's take this piece of bread remembering that B was broken for us. And go ahead and peel off the lid for the the fruit of, of juice, which Jesus said was the fruit of the vine, or re represented his his blood. And in that creation of man, with feeling and emotion and love, so we could get it how much he he loves us, he poured out all his blood and spilled it, so we could have a new relationship, a new covenant with B forever. The God of the universe who was before everything was even out here wants to be with us. Let's take his blood and remember that covenant. Thank you, Lord, for you're an all-powerful, mighty God. You are the way maker. You're the miracle worker. You kept your promises. You're lighting the darkness up. That's who you are. Thank you, God, for lighting the darkness for us. Thank you, Lord, that you gave us Jesus so that we can live forever. If anyone listening now, here or online, you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to surrender to him. You want to be baptized, born again, have a new life again. Start over again spiritually with him. Start over with the Holy Spirit presence, holy ground in your heart every day. Just join me in this prayer and get in touch with us so we can have you baptized. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Jesus, I give you my life. You are my Lord and my Savior. 
Thank you for forgiving my sins. Holy Spirit, come into my heart. Change me, mold me. That not only will I live for you forever, but that your presence and your holy ground will come out of my heart for the world to see. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, amen. God bless you, everyone. Have a wonderful week with Jesus. Tell somebody about Jesus this week. Be sure to be asking God every morning, who do you want me to tell Jesus to this week? Who can I pray for? Who can I call and encourage? Who can I say, hey, when are you going to Disneyland? So that I can go with you. And on the way, we can talk about Jesus. People will sometimes ask us, where does our tithing go to? Uh, how does our church distribute what God has given us to be able to spread the gospel into the world? Well, the way we do that is how Jesus described to us about being a witness to the world. He makes it very clear to his followers in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, that we're to go out into all the world, but not just all the world. We're to go out to our city, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, all the ends of the earth. Uh, let me read this word with you. It's in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. He describes to us how we are to witness. He says that you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, the city we live in, throughout Judea, the area of our country that we live in, in Samaria, which would be the area surrounding our region, and to all the ends of the earth. It's sort of like a bullseye of here, here's Fairfield, and then that's Jerusalem. Here's Judea, that's sort of you know Northern California, our area. And then there's Samaria, which could be all the rest of the country. And, and then here's the ends of the earth, all the world. So we see that that's how we apply our ties. Uh, we, we give to Solano Dream Center in our city, Alpha Pregnancy Resource Center in our city, and to many, many families that have need to be able to give them money when they lose a job or someone's ill or someone's sick. And, and so our money in Jerusalem goes to homeless at Solano Dream Center. It goes to, to teen uh, pregnancy and crisis pregnancy in Alpha Pregnancy Resource Center, and then to benevolence uh, in families that have need. And then in Judea, we give our money to Hope International University and to William Jessup University, two Christian universities that are making disciples, making, uh, making uh, pastors, making uh, doctors and, and business administrators and teachers that own and, and live out their lives knowing that those are just jobs that occupy their time, but they are living out a calling to go and make disciples. And then in Judea as well, there's a regional uh, church planting network called The Vine. And so we give money to them so they can plant other churches in our area. And then in Samaria, we give to a church planting network called Nexus. And they plant churches all across the country. And then we also give to a Native American missionaries so that they can promote the gospel to uh, the people that were indigenous to our land before we arrived. And then to all the ends of the earth, we support missionaries in, in the Philippines that are reaching Muslim cultures. We support a missionary in Turkey who is reaching a Syrian Muslim culture. And then we're reaching uh, and supporting a church in Liberia that helps support orphans in a school. And then there are times when, when God will put a world missionary on our heart or a, a, a people group on our heart or there's, a, or there's a, a country going through crisis that God will put on our heart and we'll send money to missionaries that we know in those countries. Most recently, we were very touched with what's going on for India right now with COVID. And, and so we've been able to give to them, uh, missionaries in India. So that's where our tithe goes. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, all the ends of the earth. Please join me in a prayer as we ask God to bless the monies that we give to him for this purpose. Lord, we want to be your witnesses. We want the gospel to spread throughout the world. Thank you, God, that we can distribute it amongst these works of yours. 
so that people will come to know Jesus. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on. Woo! Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Let's sing it one more time. Waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 That is who.